Hello geographers, welcome to a series of lessons which have been recorded for you to help you complete your exam. Um, these lessons run alongside a series of work booklets and these will help you prepare for um, the questions that we might get. Some of the notes have been completed for you and diagrams included to help with your exam preparation. Where you're expected to make notes or complete a task, the area will be boxed off and this will help you to know where you need to write. The headings in the booklets match the PowerPoint, so it's easy for you to know which pages match up, but I'll do my best to tell you what pages we're using anyway. The BBC Bite Size website is really useful. Remember, we're studying OCRB and also the CGP OCR Revision Guide. I should state that I don't own the rights to any of the images or any of the diagrams I've used in these presentations or in your work booklets. Um, I've used QR codes throughout the presentations which will take you to videos on YouTube and I've also tried to include the links as well. The title of this unit is UK in the 21st century and the exam is People and Society which is exam 2. This unit is split into two halves. We're going to complete half 7.1 first so how is the UK changing in the 21st century. As you can see from the student guide it's split into three sections First section, what does the UK look like in the 21st century? How is the UK population changing and how is the UK economy changing? As you can see by the student guide, it's split into a series of bullet points and we need to make sure that by the exam we're really confident that we know every single thing in each of those bullet points. So we're going to start with 7.1, how is the UK changing in the 21st century? Part A, what does the UK look like in the 21st century? And we're specifically going to be looking at bullet point one, overview of the human and physical geographical characteristics of the UK in this lesson. OK, geographers, I need you to turn to page two of your workbook. And we're using workbook A at the moment. Um, you need to find the page that says, what are the physical and human characteristics of the British Isles? We are going to recap our UK general knowledge and understanding of physical and human characteristics. Um, this will help us to understand the challenges faced by our country and that is what the whole topic is about. And we're going to be describing the distribution of the population in the UK. First of all, you need to know what the UK is, what that word means. So the United Kingdom is made up of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is made up of England, Scotland and Wales. OK, so we're going to do our first um, piece of work on page two of our booklet. Um, there's two key words that I need you to remember for the exam. Uh, one is relief and one is land use. Um, it's not really new vocabulary. We have talked about this a lot in previous topics. Um, so relief is the height and shape of the land. For example, is it an upland area, is it a lowland area? Relief is shown using contour lines um, on our maps. So we've got to remember the relief is the height and shape of the land. Um, these kind of maps are kind of common on our exam so we need to be able to recognize um, what is an upland area and what is a lowland area. Land use, so what is the land used for e.g. is it an urban area, is it a woodland area, again this word is really common on the exam um, so it's a word that we need to be familiar with. So you're going to pause the presentation for a second and you're going to copy down the definition of relief and you're going to copy down the definition of land use. I did say that we were going to recap some of our British Isles general knowledge um, you don't need to write these answers down, just do them in your head. But if you don't know the answers to many of these questions, then maybe you need to brush up on your British Isles general knowledge a little bit before the exam, because the more we know about the country that we're studying, the better we're going to do on the exam overall. Remember, the word relief is an important keyword. So relief is the height and shape of the land. So on our map on the right, the upland areas are shown in the browns and the lowland areas, the flatter areas that are close to sea level as shown in the greens. Let's see how many of these questions that you know the answers to. Number one, in which country are the southern uplands? Number two, Ben Nevis is in Scotland and it's the highest point in the UK. What mountain range is it located? Number three, the River Severn is the UK's longest river. For much of its course, it flows close to the border of which two British countries? Number four, what is the name of the mountain range in Wales? Number five, Mount Snowdon is the highest peak in Wales, true or false? 
Number six, what is the name of the tallest mountain in England? Number seven, what is the name of the lowland area in East Anglia? You can pause the presentation for a minute just while you have a think about how many of those questions that you know the answers to. Um, I'm going to go through the answers on the next slide, but if you don't know any of these answers, then it would be beneficial for you to do a little bit of um, Great Britain or British Isles um, like revision. Okay, well, let's go through your answers. Hopefully you've got these all correct. Remember, the relief is the height and shape of land, so the difference between the highest and lowest parts of the land. So relief shows our upland areas and our lowland areas. In which country are the southern uplands? They're found in Scotland. Ben Nevis is the highest mountain in the UK. Um, in what mountain range is it located? You'll find Ben Nevis in the Grampians, and it's 1,344 metres high. The River Severn is the UK's longest river. For much of its course, it flows close to the border of which two British countries? You should know this is England and Wales because that was part of our case study. What is the mountain range in Wales that we're talking about? Is the Cambrian Mountains. Remember, we said that um, Mount Plimlimon was the source of the River Severn and therefore that was also part of our case study. So that should be a question that you knew. Mount Stowden is the highest peak in Wales, which is true. The name of the tallest mountain in England is Scarfell Pike, which is 978 metres tall. And the name of the lowland area in East Anglia is the Fens or the Norfolk Broads. Next, we're going to talk about the land use of the UK. The word land use might be a word that's unfamiliar to some students, so we're just going to break it down. Land use is how the land is used. It's a word that comes up quite frequently in the exam, so it is a word that we need to know. So how is the land use? Land use. There are about 65 million of us who live in the UK, um, and it has one of the highest population densities in Europe, with about 268 people living per square kilometre. That makes the UK quite a densely populated country. We've got to remember, though, that the UK is quite small compared to lots of places um, in Europe, such as like France or Germany and um, the USA and, you know, places that are a lot, lot bigger than ours. Um, most of us live in urban areas, so that is towns and cities and 12% of the UK is classed as urban. So that means that 12% of the UK is, is essentially towns and cities. But actually, in reality, only 6% of the UK is built on because half of that is made up of gardens and parks and, and things like that, things that are quite familiar in the towns and cities. So if 12% of the UK is urban, what is the rest of the UK's land used for? So about 20% or so is classed as arable land. So as we can see on the photograph, arable land is essentially farmland and it's specifically used for growing crops. Around 44% of the UK um, is um, classed as grassland um, or grazing land. So that would be used for grazing um, animals such as cows or sheep and things like that. And that makes up 44% of the UK's land use. About 12% of the UK is woodland. Around 7% of the UK is mountain or moorland. And about 1% is our rivers and our lakes. So we have to remember that the UK is only about 12% urbanised and the rest is used for various other things. We're going to talk about population density now. We've talked about population density in previous topics. Um, Remember, population density is the number of people who live in an area per square kilometre. On the right hand side, we've got a diagram which shows a choropleth map of the population density of the UK. We've done choropleth maps several times before. You need to know what a choropleth map is for the exam and be able to recognise one. Remember, a choropleth map is basically a density shading map. Um, so for this one, it's colour coded. So using the key at the top, I can see that the darkest colours, so the dark browns, show um, places which have a population density of 5,000 people or more per kilometre. And I can see that the lightest ones, so the really light browns, show that the population density is around 0 to 25 people per square kilometre. So what I can see from using this key is that places like Shetland, Orkney and Highlands, have very low population densities 
if I match it to the key, I can see that the population density of those three places are between 0 and 25 people per square kilometre. There's an arrow pointing to Edinburgh and Glasgow. I can see that there are two dots which have got the darkest colours. That tells me that those two cities have population densities of 5,000 people or more per square kilometre. And Cardiff and Swansea, which is also labelled, have a population density somewhere in between. So a couple of things that are really useful on this map. First of all, the colours. They make it really easy to pick out different places. Um, the fact that it is colour coded helps me to um, describe what the map shows very easily because it gives me that banding. Where choropleth maps are sometimes not as helpful is because it is a banding and not a specific number. So, for example, in the Highlands, I know the population density is between 0 and 25 people per square kilometre, but I don't know um, specifically what number that is. OK, so we're going to complete page three now of our workbook. First of all, I need you to copy the definition of population density, which means how many people live within a square kilometre. Then we're going to describe the population density across Great Britain on the exam. Um, this would either come with a diagram such as the one on the left um, or the exam board might expect you just to know it. Um, so how would we approach this question? So it's very simple. We're going to use our key. We're going to use some places that are named on the figure um, and we're going to use the bandings. OK, we're going to make it really simple when we write our answer. So we're going to comment on areas with a population density of maybe over two and a half thousand people. So the darkest colours. We're going to comment on the places that have a low population density, such as um, the places like Orkney, Highlands, Shetland. Um, and we're going to include some of the names and some of the data from the map. So I'd like you to have a go at answering that question in your workbook. You'll need to pause the presentation whilst you complete this. And then on the next slide is an example answer. So if you're struggling with this answer, then feel free for revision purposes to copy down the example answer that I've given. So let's go through an example answer now of what you could have included to describe the population density um, using the map on the left. So we're going to use our key to help us to and get the data into our sentences. Um, you can review your personal answer or you can copy elements of mine. Just make sure that you have a description of the UK's population density for this section. So an example of what you could have written. Um, in Scotland, the only area between the cities of Edinburgh and Glasgow have a population density of over two and a half thousand people per square kilometre. Much of the highlands and islands have a very low population density between 0 and 25 people per square kilometre. In Wales, areas with the highest density are concentrated on the coast. In South Wales, around the capital city Cardiff, which is around 1,000 people per square kilometre. The central regions around the Cambrian Mountains have the lowest population density of less than 50 people per square kilometre. England has a much higher population density with cities such as London and Birmingham having over 5,000 people per square kilometre. The southwest and east of England have a lower density of between 100 and 250 people per square kilometre. Most of England has a population density of over 250 people per square kilometre. So that's kind of how you would answer a question like that. So you would have to make sure you name places or you name areas and you have to make sure that you've quoted from the key. Otherwise, you're going to drop some marks. So far this lesson, we have um, gone through an overview of human and physical um, characteristics of the UK. We've looked a little bit about land use and we've looked a little bit about population density.